Welcome to $100 Plus Mileage, the podcast about New Hampshire's citizen legislature. Our legislators only get paid $100 a year, plus mileage, and there are 424 of them. You've probably run into your legislator at a Dunkin' Donuts or the local gas station, but do you know all of the roughly 1,000 bills they're voting on this year? We're here to tell you about some of the bills you might not have heard about, unpack the facts, pros, and cons, and tell you how to share your opinion. I'm Anna Brown, Director of Research and Analysis for Citizens Count. And I'm Mike Dunbar, Content Editor for Citizens Count. So today's topic has been a hot one in the North Country for years, but it's our first time covering it here somehow. We're talking about off-highway recreational vehicles. These are known as OHRVs, and whether they should be allowed on public roads. So specifically, who gets to decide where these OHRVs can travel? Let's start with a little background on the issue. About a decade ago, several New Hampshire ATV clubs, the Bureau of Trails, and state legislators all came together to launch the Northeast's largest interconnected trail system for OHRVs, known as Ride the Wilds. The initiative connected over 1,000 miles of trails on private property and state parks. Changes in state law also opened the door to OHRVs traveling on regular roads and highways in some areas, which made it easier for riders to stop for food or find the next trailhead without loading their OHRV onto a trailer. Ride the Wilds sparked a flurry of economic activity in the North Country. Meals and rooms tax revenue from Coas County swung upwards, and there was a large increase in OHRV registrations. OHRV activity accelerated even more during the COVID-19 pandemic. Right. We all saw the crazy photos of cars parked for miles at state parks, people swarming outdoors. I can only imagine what it was like when people started swarming on ATVs. It definitely caused some problems. In 2021, the Fish and Game Department announced it was so overwhelmed with calls, it would no longer respond to complaints about OHRVs on town roads. Those calls would be left to local police. These sorts of conflicts started a long time before COVID, though. Since Ride the Wild started marketing in 2013, there have been dozens of bills in the New Hampshire legislature to add new safety requirements for drivers, stiffen penalties for property damage, and open or close certain areas to OHRVs. And that brings us to the bill we're talking about today, which is HB 1109. And that would change the process to open or close town roads to OHRVs. Under current state law, city or town councils and boards of selectmen can vote to open or close sidewalks, class four, class five, and class six highways to OHRVs. So those are some fancy classifications, but generally speaking, class four and five highways are roads maintained by a town. Class six highways include public ways that are not maintained or repaired by the town, like some dirt roads. In 2019, the state passed a law that requires a public hearing at least 14 days before a vote to open or close any of those roads to OHRVs. This 2019 law also requires notification to abutters, which is a term for people who live next to the road, by verified mail. So HB 1109, the bill we're talking about today, would require the legislative body of a city or town to vote on opening or closing roads to OHRVs rather than the select board of that town. There are a few different government structures for towns and cities in New Hampshire, but for most towns, the legislative body we're talking about here would be the voters. In other words, it would take a majority vote at a full town meeting to open or close roads to OHRVs. Okay, let's talk about those pros and cons. Supporters of HB 1109 argue that town councils and select boards are too often swayed by OHRV lobbyists who show up in force at public hearings. A full town meeting, on the other hand, would give property owners the power to vote directly on whether OHRVs should be allowed to travel on roads near their homes. When I tuned into the public hearing for this bill, one Gorham resident in particular was very unhappy with the process for opening and closing roads. And she said, direct quote, people who live along roads open to OHRVs will definitely tell you the system is broken. She's part of a group of residents who are suing over noise, exhaust, and dust kicked up by OHRVs on roads near their homes. Like, they're talking about, like, they basically can't even have barbecues outside and they can't hear their own lawnmower. But once again, this is just about the process, not whether or not OHRVs are there at all. Right. This isn't a bill about OHRVs on roads in general, though. It's about the process for opening and closing roads. And opponents of HB 1109 are concerned that a town meeting process would give a number of small, disgruntled residents too much power to close roads near their property. This would fracture the long, interconnected routes that make New Hampshire so appealing to OHRV riders in the first place. 
Opponents also argue that New Hampshire should wait a few more years before considering another change to the process. Public hearings and abutter notifications have only been required since 2019. Worth noting here that another bill this year, HB 1188, would set up a commission to study OHRV use in the state, including OHRV use on town roads. So there are so many issues related to this that we didn't even touch on. So that study might happen and weigh in on the best way for towns to make decisions. Okay, so we have to cut in here for an update to the bill that happened while we were recording this episode. On April 28th, the Senate voted to rewrite HB 1109 so that the impact was much, much smaller than the original. The amendment to the bill states that the select board or governing body may vote to close a road to OHRVs or limit access if an abutter can show damage from OHRVs that limits their ability to access their property. This rewritten bill might give property owners a new opportunity to ask to close a road to OHRVs, but the final decision would stay with the select board, not a town meeting. The House must approve this rewritten bill, so the debate is not over. If you want to see HB 1109 passed in its original form requiring a town meeting, or if you want to see HB 1109 voted down, contact your state representative. You can start by finding out who that representative is at citizenscount.org slash elected dash officials. Okay, back to the show. Time to wrap up the show with our segment only in New Hampshire. Anna, what do you got? I wasn't able to find a fun fact about ATVs in New Hampshire, but I came close. It turns out a New Hampshire resident is credited with the invention of the snowmobile. According to some people, it's a little controversial. There was also a dude in Canada. There was also a machine that was related to tree logging, but we're going to go with it because New Hampshire is awesome. So in 1913, Virgil D. White, a Ford automobile dealer in West Ossipee, New Hampshire, invented a snowmobile conversion kit for the Model T. It put the back wheels on a track and added wooden skis to the front. He got a patent for the kit in 1917 and coined the term snowmobile. Well, today we think about the snowmobile as a recreational vehicle. When it was first invented, it was used for essential travel in the snow. Think fire departments, doctors, milkmen, and so on. And according to the internet, one of these snowmobile Model Ts was in fact the mail truck in the beloved claymation, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. That is so crazy. I I can't think of anything I want more at this very moment than a Model T that is like a snowmobile Model T. That's that just sounds amazing. Well, I saw one that was that came up for auction. It was about fifty six thousand dollars. So I mean, you could at this point in your life, you could choose a Tesla or a Model T snowmobile. And I mean, on the bright side, the Model T snowmobile is probably less likely to catch on fire. But on the other <laughs> hand, the Tesla could get you around the state year round. So I mean, you decide where you want to put your fifty grand. But also, there is a really cool club for Model T snowmobile enthusiasts that operates nationwide. So you would also be part of a cool community. And, you know, maybe you'd be secretly helping out Santa Claus. So Yeah, I, I think I know where I'm putting my money. I think I know. But that wraps up our episode for today. You can find out more information and episodes at citizenscount.org. We'd like to thank Franklin Pierce University for producing and the Grant State News Collaborative for hosting. Our theme music is composed by Mike Dunbar. Lastly, we thank you for giving us a listen and thinking about how you can be part of what makes New Hampshire by the people, for the people.